Hi, this is Simon Obstall. I uh, hope you're all safe and well, and welcome to part four of this tutorial in which we've been looking at creating this Eye of Sauron effect. Now, because I didn't want this to run into five parts or even more, I'm not going to go through everything in painstaking detail. I'm just going to give you an overview of the remaining things that need to be taken care of. So there's one important thing we need to get out of the way, first of all, and that's how we set up this eye group when we made it 3D. And because I was just doing it for the purposes of demonstration at that point, I wasn't paying attention to the implications that would have for this control layer here at the bottom. So you'll notice that it now doesn't actually work if we try to rotate the eye. So we need to be a little bit tidier with our housekeeping here. So I'm going to come to the top of this group, maybe even above Matt there, and let's make another new group. And we want this one to be 2D, not 3D. And then we want to throw everything into it, like so. And we want to move the bulge from that 3D group to our internal 2D group. And now I think you'll see that adjusting the control layer does indeed work again. So I don't want to go into too much detail about how to animate the eye because really that's one for you to use your creative judgment about. But I'm just going to show you roughly what I've did. So we're keyframing the X and Y position. And the main one I think one we want to control is, is X. So let's have a look at what I did with that. And so X is giving us this swivel left to right. So here's the keyframes for that. Notice that the eye swivels quite fast. And I think that's what happens, you know, if you're, if you're redirecting your gaze, you actually swivel quite fast. So make those little swivels happen quickly. Like there's a quick one there like a panicked refocus. Maybe that's happening a little bit too fast, but you get the idea. So we also probably want to have a little bit of up and down rotation, not too much, just a little bit of a drift, I think, like that. And that's what we get from keyframing the Y position. Now, I would recommend you don't go beyond around 100 pixels for any of these values. I think probably even keep it under 75. I mean, that's that's 75 on X and Y, and the angle is quite acute. So I think that works fine. Don't go beyond 75. One suggestion I'd have about this is to take your mobile phone and film yourself being this character, moving your eyes accordingly, and then bring that clip into motion and use it as a guide for the animation. That's often a very good way of getting lifelike results because you're actually mimicking a real world, real world behavior rather than trying to make it up. So just a suggestion on that front. So while we're on the subject of animation, let's also remind ourselves that we can animate the pupil blinking. And we can do that using the mat here, the Bezier shape that we created as the, the mat for the pupil. So you'll notice that scaling that value gives us the blink. So let's just see how that works. I'm going to come to this point here and set a keyframe for the X scale. I'm going to step forward two frames. I'm going to set that down, not all the way to zero, I think. We just want a little bit of a slit like that. So that's actually around 30 as it happens. And then let's skip forward three frames and bring it up back up to 100. And that will give us a blink that looks like that. And that works quite well. So just, just drop in some blinks whenever you feel like it's a good idea. I also wonder whether that pupil is a little bit too wide. He might look a little bit less friendly if we actually made that smaller. So let's adjust the Bezier shape itself to control that. So I think I'm going to try making that point there 20 and this one minus 20 and then the eye is consistently more slitty and lizard-like. Personally, I think I prefer that. So let's now talk about the castle environment. Obviously, at the moment, we're just simulating it using this flat 
plane here, the thing called horns. Now, I was in two minds about showing you this, so I'm just going to show you my castle build project here. Let's switch to the perspective view and we can see how that's looking. There's quite a few techniques involved in this and I think it's just a bit more complication than I want to go into for the purposes of this tutorial. If you're interested in this kind of environment build, do have a look at my space station tutorial, which has a very in-depth look at, at how you'd kind of create this sort of environment in motion. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to give you this project with the assets and you can import this into the master scene. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy that group and then I'll come back to my project build here and I'm just going to paste that in. So paste. Let's just turn off that old horns layer there. Now we can't see this because my castle build is not as long as this project. So I'm just going to come to the end of the timeline there. With this selected, I'm going to hit O on the keyboard and that extends that all the way to there. Then I'm also going to reset the Z position to zero and bring the Y down to negative 400. And so we're kind of back to where we were. So now we can move our camera out and we're starting to see our castle there. Now at the moment, the only thing illuminating our architecture is the main fire light. So it's really only eliminating this central support structure. So we need some more ambient light. So let's add a new light. Point light is good. Let's make it just a little bit blue, something like that. Let's increase its intensity to 300, reduce its fall off to zero, and let's just move its position. We'll have a thousand on X, 250 on Y, and a thousand on Z. And you can see it's now lighting up this right-hand side. And we're seeing a little bit more of, of the detail. So I think what we'll do also is just duplicate that and move it over to the left as a, as a little bit of a fill. So let's move this to negative 1,000 on X, but we want to really reduce this down, maybe by adjusting the fall off down there to two, for example, and maybe even reduce the intensity down to 200. So really it's just a little bit of a, a fill, like so. And while we're on the subject of lighting, I think we need extra lights just to give a little bit more detail on that structure there where it's close to the eye. So what we're going to do is add another light. Let's choose a nice uh, yellow for it. Let's set its intensity up to a thousand. It's fall off, we're going to have something like 12. I'm just going to turn on the overlay so I can position this. So I'm going to position it here. And I think you can see that that's now just, just hitting that edge there and that's going to be good for us. And then we want to add a wriggle to its intensity. So add parameter behavior wriggle. Let's set the amount to 500. The apply mode to add and subtract. And let's increase the noisiness to 0.6. So that's, that's not too bad. I think probably that amount is a bit too much. Let's go for 300. And uh, let's reduce the frequency, I think, down to about 0.5. And then I think what we want to do is just duplicate that and move it over to the other side. So let's go for positive 580 and change the random seed. And I think that's helping. Now, because we've added all this extra light, the main kind of horn area is looking a little bit washed out It's because we've added these blue lights in. Uh, so what we can do is come into the castle build and look at this layer here called Horns Revised. So that's the main horns element there. And come to Filters, Color, Levels. And let's just grab the gamma, the middle control there, and just bring it up, which is actually bringing the gamma down, depending on how you want to look at it, till it feels like it's a little bit more plausible. So somewhere around there. So then let's set up a camera move. First of all, I'm going to enter an X position of 750 
and a y rotation of 8 degrees. And that's because I want to use these two behaviors here. So I've got a throw behavior. Turn that on. So we've got an x value of negative 75, a z value of negative 50. And then we've got a sweep set to swivel y. And the n value is negative 13. I mean, really, I'm not suggesting you have to slavishly follow these numbers. I really want you to be experimenting with your own animations. So that's kind of swiveling us around like this. And obviously, we'll just need to sort out our sky. So let's come down to our sky group here, open it up, and let's select both of these layers here and set that x value, x scale value, I should say, to 350. So we're just stretching it out horizontally. No, that's not enough. We'll need to go to, I think, 400. So we're just making sure that the sky covers our scene. Another thing I need to show you is that I added in some clouds. So there you go, 3D group. Made them nice and big, 4,000 by 2,000, just so they're covering everything. Get the scale as is, speed of 0.4. Made the color that used to be white. I've made it very dark gray with a small hint of red in it. Switch to turbulent, and I've added a rate behavior to the X offset. So I've got negative 0.03 in there. And I've also added a twirl filter, just so they're kind of being a little bit displaced. And it's probably worth just duplicating that layer and moving it forward a thousand on Z. You'll notice my opacity value for both of these is really, really low, and I've set the blend mode to screen. So we're really just getting quite a subtle effect, but it really does help just to kind of bed in the atmosphere. Now, one final thing I want to point out is that with all our lighting, we've managed to turn these lightning effects a little bit too white. And I think what we're going to have to do is to come into those layers. Remember, we didn't actually do anything with the color. We were relying on the, the master light to colorize them. So what we can do is just add a color levels. So this is the core lightning here. And let's reduce the blue like so. I don't want to go too far, otherwise it starts to get a little bit dark, something like that. And we can copy that same one onto the edge lightning group as well just they retain a little bit more of their color, possibly even a little bit more with that one. I think that's a bit better. So I hope you found that interesting. Thanks very much for sticking with it all this way. Please let me know if there's anything else you'd like explained and I'll do my best. So thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Stay safe.